I've seen some scandalous Pokemon RNG in my time, but what I witnessed on January 9th, 2016 wounded me so deeply, it has left scarring on my very soul. So this was a Gen 6 UU game for SPL between two great players. Xmarth leads off with his big, big threat, uh, Choice Band Entei, uh, against fellow Fire-type Rotom Heat. And what I remember noticing when I watched this game live, because Xmarth was on my team, uh, was thinking, wow, Porygon 2 walls, like, everything. <laughs> so the matchup looks pretty good, especially because Choice Band Entei is also a massive threat. So, I mean, you gotta be careful around things like uh, knockoff, Mamoswan removing, Porygon 2 is a Violite, but it generally seems very, very doable between that and you've got the defensive aspect of the matchup covered and the offensive aspect of the matchup covered. So with good play, you have all the tools in the world to uh, bring home the win. Uh, this isn't like one of those games where you look at team preview, oh no, the matchup sucks, I'm so done for, which you shouldn't be doing in general. But yeah, this looked uh, positively positive. So, Entei leads off, and the Rotom reveals itself as Scarf, Volt Switching, and Entei is going to fire off a big Stone Edge, ripping right into the, that Zapdos, which had not been for that well-chosen Charty Berry from Teal's End, would have just dropped it immediately. So the thing with uh, Flare Blitz E-Speed Entei is that it's locked to an Adamant Nature, so there's no base 100 speed tie here. It knows it will be slower, and Zapdos can roost that Stone Edge off, so no point in staying in. Xmarth makes a great switch to Mamoswine, scaring that Zapdos out. And while in something like DPP, Mamo would not be nearly as eager on switching into a potential Heat Wave Zapdos, uh, in Gen 6, well, Gen 5, but, you know, we're in Gen 6 here, it has thick fat, so it will bounce off, which is just wonderful. And it even has better um, a better move to threaten it with than in Gen 4, because in Gen 4, you'd have to stone edge it, and you know how ugly that can get, especially if it starts stone edging, my god. But here, we've got the massive threat that is Icicle Crash. And you also notice that Mamoswine is a threat, because, you know, that whole classic stab combination thing, where the things that eat its Icicle Crashes don't want to take EQ and vice versa... Uh, the one exception being that Teal's Rotom Heat does take both Icicle Crash and EQ, but it, then you notice, oh, it actually isn't very good at taking Icicle Crash because Mamoswine is really strong, and Rotom Heat, while not a frail Pokemon, has low HP, uh, so it's not going to be good at switching in without investment. And since there's a Scarf set, then it is going to take a lot of damage. So, Icicle Crash seems pretty free. You don't want to risk that Cobalion necessarily, and it's already a conundrum. What is going on here? So, uh, Teal makes the early safe switch to Rotom Heat, you know, see what's going on, and Marth doubles back to Entei, which is an absolutely beautiful move, because when you've got Entei, when you've got a big threat, you know, a, a Choice Band, Choice Specs, whatever Pokemon that just fires off attacks and is going to threaten a KO, if not outright force a KO every time it's in, the name of the game becomes get this Pokemon in as much as possible. You know, you don't want to just play passively, oh, we'll see when I get a chance. No, you make those chances. And Martha does it beautifully here by uh, bringing Entei in so early and threatening right off the bat. And now Zapdos' Charty Berry is spent. And, I mean, even with the Resist Berry, you saw it did 62.8, which is massive. So it has no chance. And uh, after that, you know, what else is taking... Actually, it's only Rotom Heat that takes Flare Blitz. Well, I guess Haxorus, but you want Haxorus uh, taking big damage because then that guarantees Mamoswine will revenge kill it uh, with Ice Shard. So, also, it's not a very good switch to Banded uh, Flare Blitz either. I mean, Haxorus isn't physically frail, but it's not physically bulky either. So, uh, and now Marth makes... He goes even further. He could just, oh, you know what? I'll take another uh, Volt Switch or T-Bolt, and I'll threaten to Stone Edge KO, or I'll Flare Blitz. But no, he goes to Mamoswine on the Volt Switch or T-Bolt, knowing Teal is forced to try and deal with the Entei threat. And now he's got en uh, Mamo in... And notice how beautiful this positioning is. He's got... Previously, Rotom Heat was the switch into Mamo, right? And, uh, it, I mean, yeah, it's not the best switch, but it's still a switch. It was the check. And now, what you have is... The check to Mamoswine is being forced out by Mamoswine. This is absolutely perfect. This is exactly what you want. That was a beautifully heads-up play. And now what do you switch into, you know? with that whole uh, Icicle Crash EQ dilemma. 
So a big Life Orb EQ rips into the opposing Mammoth Swine. Uh, 77.8, my goodness. And rather than risk a speed tie because Thick Fat means Ice Shard might not do the deal, uh, Porygon 2 comes in. Uh, as Teal makes another nice move uh, himself and goes back to Rotom on a potential subsequent EQ. So he can threaten it out with uh, Overheat. I mean, yes, Thick Fat, but Stab Overheat is going to hit really hard. And Mamo has already incurred a round of Life Orb Recoil. So now against P2, then the threat is Trick. Uh, whether you want to lose the Pokemon outspeeding Entei or, and Salamence and Cabalion, I don't know about that. Uh, but he's got also the great speed in uh, Mamoswine's priority and uh, Mega Sceptile, of course, and Cabalion and Zapdos is no slouch either. So, you know, might be worth it uh, to hinder the Porygon 2. Instead, Marth goes to Salamence, not risking the Mamoswine, and uh, beautifully obtains a Scarf Salamence and gives the Rotom Heat a Life Orb. So, while Rotom Heat's attacks getting stronger, not super welcome, it also makes it even worse at checking Mamoswine because now every time it attacks, it will take Life Orb unless it, of course, uses an, a, an electric move into Mamoswine. So, uh, Scarf Mence is not a bad Pokemon either. Uh, so, we see it's Intimidate, so no Moxie shenanigans, of course. But still going to threaten even if it's whatever the set is. And uh, the lack of speed is going to be big. And uh, yeah, the possibility of tricking the P2 is still good because you don't want P2 losing a Violet and gaining Life Orb. Maybe. <laughs> Very possibly. I mean, you wouldn't... It's not the worst thing in the world, but uh, see how the matchup shakes out. So in comes Zapdos, and since the Dragon Resist is Cobalion, nothing is going to want to take that Draco Meteor. Does a hefty chunk, and there's no chance of a speed tie, because, again, here's Scarf Mence. So now Cobalion comes in more safely. It doesn't want to risk switching into something like Fire Blast. Uh, so, and honestly, even a neutral, or a neutral, a neutral special attack Draco Meteor uh, resisted would have done a nice 40%, so that would have worn down Cobalion nicely. Now, 20% is not a ton, but it's still significant considering Cobalion is not healing with leftovers, and uh, Zapdos has been chunked really, really nicely. If rocks go up before Zapdos uh, gets back in, it's done. Unless there's some deep, but yeah, no, there's no, the only Pokemon that's going to defog on Teal's team is Zapdos itself. And uh, this is not Gen 7 where Rotom has defog. So in comes Entei coming into Cabalion again. Uh, on the, hmm, that's an interesting move. I'm not sure quite what happened. Uh, my goal is not to super analyze this game because I don't think I have the metagame knowledge of uh, what Gen 6 UU was at the time to be as precise as I was like, and there's a possibility I'm overlooking something. But I think Entei wanted to come in before Rocks got up to threaten another Flare Blitz and claim a KO. I mean, even if Mamo or Zapdos get sacrificed, hey, that's good, that's fine. Uh, and yeah, no, of course that was the move, because uh, the Rocker is either Cobalion or Mamoswine, and seeing as Mamoswine is an enormous threat, I assume, this is kind of a cross-tier, cross-generational thing, you want it attacking as much as possible. And if you have another rocker, then generally go with that. Especially because Cobalion is not that much of a threat that, you know, Mamoswine is the bigger threat, therefore put rocks on Cobalion. Especially because Cobalion is good stabs, so you can still get go SR, SD stabs if you want. And still get a good threat out of it while not, while taking advantage of its better defensive profile. That's another big thing. Cobalion is much better defensively and uh, therefore you get more opportunities to pop up rocks. When Mamoswine comes in, uh, you, you do not do so as easily, and you want to take advantage of the bigger hits it's dishing out. So, uh, Entei comes in. The Mamoswine double, I'm not quite sure about. I'm not sure what it was looking for there. Mamoswine was looking for... Yeah, I don't know. It's not like it was going to... Draco Meter wasn't coming in. I mean, Mamoswine wasn't coming in. Did I think maybe Teal thought, oh, Slowking is coming in, and I'm going to threaten the Slowking with Life Orb knockoff from Mamoswine. Because uh, Slowking does resist both of uh, Cobalion stabs. So and I can see it in that sense. Uh, but Marth made the more aggressive play rather than going for the more passive route of, oh, well, Cobalion counters, or Slowking counters Cobalion, therefore I'll go to uh, that. 
instead of going for that and just you know scalding and seeing what happens, then Entei forces a KO. So again, beautifully aggressive move, keeping him ahead. And now Teal is forced to sacrifice Zapdos, so once Marth gets those rocks, they are permanent. Uh, he even goes for extreme speed to not get ice sharded unnecessarily by the Mamo. Picks off the Zapdos nicely. So, very precise play. Now Cobalion is going to come in and force the Entei out. But, oh, and now another double switch to take advantage of the, well, what we thought was going to be the Slow King switch this time. But now, Marth keeps up the pressure beautifully. Rather than go for the passive response of, Cobal of uh, Slow King, he's going to go, okay, well, previously Cobalion forced out my uh, Salamence. Uh, but now my Salamence is going to be the switch into Cobalion. So beautifully, beautifully done. And now it looks like it has another very free Draco Meteor that nothing is going to want to take. Oh, and it misses. Oh, God, I forgot about that. Oh, that would have been a really nice big rip into Rotom. Rotom's ability to check uh, Mammoth Swine once it eats that Draco Meteor is absolutely gone. And it rips into Salamence for a nice plus 50, uh, over 50% Volt Switch. And I mean, Life Orb for its troubles, which is unfortunate, but now in comes Mamoswine. And uh, with Salamence's utility greatly diluted, there's the only point uh, left to it is to ensure Mamoswine doesn't hit something more valuable. And I mean, takes more Life Orb. So now, you know, with Stealth Rock, I mean, we see in the replay now it's 12.2. So it actually cannot switch into Stealth Rock again. But yeah, now in comes Marth's own uh, Cobalion. I don't, I never remember if it's Cobalion or Cobalion, but. I've always said Cabalion in my head, so. Uh, and now it's going to CC and finish the Mamo off. So, 5-4. Now Teal's going to get some momentum back with what he switches into, but uh, it's still generally looking pretty good. Despite that unfortunate Meteor miss, then he's still got, you know, what, whatever Teal can threaten with, it's handled. Because Sloking and Porygon 2 are such a great defensive duo, and he's got plenty of offensive threat uh, himself, and speed, you know, the double priority of Mamoswine and Entei, and the good speed of Cobalion and Entei. So, uh, covered both offensively and defensively, just what you want. Now, in comes Porygon 2. Mega Sceptile is a big threat, and it is going to launch a Focus Blast, but it's not even going to do half, because Porygon 2 is an absolute beast. And it's going to do, it's going to launch another Focus Blast, and again, Zilch. Uh, it's going to get recover stalled easily, and it's just going to go back up to full. So as soon as uh, Sceptile switches, then P2's back at full, and now rocks can make this a little hairy, but uh, it's still not a situation that cannot be played around. That said, uh, Sceptile is a big threat if P2, once rocks go up, so Marth is still going to have to exercise a great deal of offensive pressure to keep up. So, in comes Sloking into the Cobalion finally, and Cobalion Swords dances, so no rocks. I don't know if the rocks were on Mamoswine or not, but uh, a strange move. I, I'm not sure who the SD was for. I guess maybe in the event that P2 stayed in, you don't want to CC and then lower your special defense and get t bolted or something, but if P2 stayed in, it would like T-Wave or something. So, and if P2 didn't stay in, then Sloking was going to come in. And if you're not going to attack the Slow King after, then I don't know. Maybe I don't know the set, so I maybe SD was the best move because you do, just don't want to CC into P2. I don't know, but it did seem unlikely P2 was going to be risked there. But uh, yeah, especially with rocks not being an option here. So Slow King goes for a Scald and does a paltry 9% into the Quad Resistance Mega Sceptile. Uh, no burn, but no worries, because Porygon 2 is completely good into Mega Sceptile. It gets a uh, Giga Drain, so nice move from Teal there. Uh, this is kind of like a move that you might see in advance, where a Zapdos might T-bolt a Blissey early on in Sand, and the Blissey won't soft boil it off, because what are you doing soft boiling off that, you know, paltry little T-bolt? But that paltry little T-bolt leaves Blissey into a KO range from its teammate Mix Mensa's Brick Break later, so now Blissey can't switch into it later on. So uh, what Teal's trying to do here is... Uh, try to get Marth into not recovering off, because that Giga Drain did nothing. It only did uh, 20%. Why would you recover that off? And then it would be in Focus Blast range, uh, to a KO range. But uh, Marth very smartly just goes right for the recover. Now, in comes Rotom again, and now it's a threat, because it's, it is undracoed, uh, which is really big, and it is 
uh, actually kind of threatening with his attacks too into everything but uh, Porygon 2, which obviously doesn't want to get tricked. But Entei heroically survives a Life Orb Thunderbolt just by the skin of its teeth. Beautifully done. And now, with Rotom having lost the Scarf, it is outsped by Entei. So what is the move? Is it going to be Stone Edge to take out the uh, Rotom? Or is it going to be Flare Blitz to try and hit Cobalion switching in? I uh, decides, you know what, I'm just going to go all out and Flare Blitz the Rotom because it covers a Sceptile, or covers Sceptile, I mean obviously covers Sceptile, but it covers Cobalion, it'll still hit Haxorus or whatever really hard, and even if Rotom stays in, as it does, then you're going to do so much damage to it, I mean 65.6, .6, my god, and with Life Orb then it will be, you know, it's, the threat is limited. Actually, it doesn't even take Life Orb, I take that back, it's going to have two more hits with Life Orb, and more importantly, still has the opportunity to trick the Porygon 2, uh, because it doesn't attack since Entei gets KO'd by its own recoil. But the important part is that it is now not able to check Mamoswine as well. So progress has been made. Or a Cabalion. So it's a shame that Entei had to go down for the sins of Salamence's Draco miss. But that is what happens. So Rotom is preserved as Sceptile comes in to absorb a close combat. At this point you gotta keep, in this 4-4 four four game, you gotta keep everything alive as long as you can before you can start, you know, because those sacrifices can be really, really big when you're hit-taking ability. So if, uh, I mean, that Giga Drain kind of paying dividends there, I mean, no, it wasn't going to, it only took 10% before, but it certainly helped. So P2 comes back in. It's going to take two Focus Blasts. The only way it's going to, oh, a crit. Yeah, so I remember watching this at the time and going, well, the only way the Sceptile ever breaks P2 is by critting Focus Blast. So surely crit fishing Focus Blast, well, I mean, the odds are low, but they were certainly got, well, crit or spit F drop. But it also has to hit more, right? It's uh, hit three out of three Focus Blasts, and then it hits the fourth. And uh, Brofist's legendary World Cup game where he missed eight out of eight comes to my mind and a tear escapes from my eye. So, uh, yeah, Mamoswine comes in, ready to revenge kill, Rotom finally goes down, and yeah, so now in comes Cobalion again, uh, no, in comes Haxorus, I take it back, and it's interesting because if it outrages, then it's revenge kill by Cobalion, and, well, I mean, the threat is still Sceptile. Because Sceptile beats Cobalion and uh, Slowking. But Slowking beats uh, Cobalion, and Sceptile is too low to safely switch into Slowking at this point. So the question is what do you do? Do you go to Cobalion? Do you stay in with Mamoswine? Uh, and Ice Shard to ensure that it's in KO range. Uh, actually, the Haxorus isn't even going to outrage, it's going to Dragon Claw, and it crits. And uh, Marth stays in and goes for the Icicle Crash KO beautifully. But without Outrage, then it wouldn't have even KO'd Mammal. But now it crits and brings it into KO range of its own Life Orb. Without that crit, Mamoswine's still alive. And Palms hit foreheads everywhere. As, yeah, now the option to Revenge Kill the Sceptile is gone. Yeah, so... Uh, Marth goes to Cabalion first. I'm not sure if that was the best move. If it wasn't just better to go right to Slowking, because Slowking handles Cobalion. And oh no, you know what he was doing? He's trying to force the Cabal. The yeah, he was trying to force the Sceptile to miss Focus Blast, which was, I mean, under most circumstances, then it is a reliable win condition. But under these circumstances, this Sceptile just refuses to miss. And uh, <laughs> yeah. So, 5 out of 5 Focus Blasts hit. Oh, man. So, the Draco miss, and then the Focus Blast crit, and then the Dragon Claw crit on top of everything else. Just utterly tragic. The Mamo would have still kept him in the game here, and Giga does too much, and Slow King can't call Mind its way out of this mess. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. <laughs> I was just thinking of uh, how terrible Focus Blast is, and then I thought of this game about where it does the complete opposite of uh, what it usually does. It not only hits five out of five times, but it crits. Outrageous. More outrageous than the Haxorus, which Dragon Clawed and did uh, 
did nonsense. So, uh, that is it from me. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.